So, hello and welcome to lesson 10 in our study of optimization 1. So, in this video, we will talk about the golden ratio or the golden mean section search method. So, a quick introduction. The golden ratio section search is a Fibonacci type of search and in our previous lesson, as in lesson 9, we talked about the Fibonacci search method. So the golden section search is a Fibonacci type of search in which the golden ratio in any iteration remains constant. Okay, so that means that the golden ratio is the same as the Fibonacci except that with that one, we always have a constant interval. The ratio is constant. It is 0 0.618. So the golden ratio R is 0 0.618. So the first thing we want to do in this video is to learn how to derive that. How do we derive that R is indeed 0 0.618? So let's consider an iteration which begins with the interval AD. And we place two points B and C in such a way that we have something like this. So you can see this our interval A and D. And we place two points here, B and C. Okay. So what we do is that we take the portion from A to C. Okay, so when you take the portion from A to C, when you find the interval between that, so the interval between the point A to C, this first one, you can see is from A to C, is C minus A. Okay, then we divide it by the length or of the or the interval, the length of the whole line. You see that will be D minus A. Okay, so we have c minus a over d minus a and this is the same as when you move from d to b okay so the distance will be d minus b all over the distance of the entire interval which will be d minus a so we call this equation one so note that carefully so after getting that, then note this. So now if you are trying to minimize a modal function f over this interval, so the interval is ad, then we evaluate f at b and c. So we have this interval here. A, B, A, D, B, and C. Okay, so after finding the functional values, that is F of B and F of C. If F of B is less than F of C, what it means is that the minimum can be found somewhere here. So now we can have something like this. So we discard this region. So now that we discard this interval, right? Then we continue working with this interval. So that means we will discard this and we'll just be left with this interval. Then if f of b is greater than f of c, we discard the interval close at a open as b and continue working with this. So it's a similar explanation to what I did here. Okay. Alright, so let's take them. You see, when you take the first one, we are working with this interval. When you take the second one, we are working with the interval B to D. Okay. All right. So, you see that um, when you take the distance between B and A, we just draw a line here. So, the distance between B and A is B minus A. And we divide that by the distance between the entire interval, which is C minus A. We have that here. Then, 
here to when you move from D to C, the length or the distance will be D minus C over the entire length of the line BD, which is D minus B. So combining these two, we will have R will be equal to B minus A over C minus A, which is the same as D minus C over D minus B. And we call this equation 2. So you could see that we have equation 1. This is equation 1. And from this analysis, we've been able to get equation 2. So what we do is that we multiply our r's. So r times r. The most what we do is that we always take the first part in each of them. So is when you take the first equation, we have r is equal to this, which is equal to this. So we take this first part of it. Then when you come to the second equation, we take the first part of it too. So that means r squared will be equal to c minus a over d minus a times b minus a over c minus a. Then c minus a cancels c minus a. Then we have b minus a over d minus a. So after doing that, the next thing is that we take our r and we subtract it from 1. So we have 1 minus r will be equal to 1 minus. And you know, we have a lot of expressions for r. By which of them do we choose? So we choose d minus b over d minus a, which we can see here. So we can see that one here. Okay, so let's move on with the proof. So we have 1 minus R will be equal to 1 minus D minus B over D minus A. And you can see that the LCM is D minus A. So when we decide to multiply the right hand side here by D minus A, we will have 1 times D minus A, then minus D minus B over D minus A. Then when we expand, we get something like this. And you know D minus D goes away and we have B minus A. So we have one minus R will be equal to B minus A over D minus A. But note that here our R squared is B minus A over D minus A. So that means we can replace this with R squared. So we have one minus R will be equal to R squared. Then making rearrangement we get r squared plus r minus 1 will be equal to 0. So solving this quadratic equation is going to give you r1 to be negative 1 plus root 5 over 2, which is 0 0.618. And you get r2 to be negative 1 minus root 5 on 2, which is negative 1.618. But since it's a distance we are looking for, okay, we take the positive 1. So taking a positive number, we'll have R is equal to 0 0.618, which is the golden ratio. So this is how we derive the golden ratio. And actually, this is one of the ways you can derive it. There are other several ways that you can go about it to obtain the same result. Okay. So if you didn't get anything, you can pause the video and go back and analyze carefully. You understand it. So now let's go through the algorithm and solve a question. So the algorithm is the same for the Fibonacci search method as discussed in lesson 9. So in lesson 9, we discussed the Fibonacci search method, except that with the golden ratio method, the interval of uncertainty is constant here. So we always have it to be 0.618. So let's look at the algorithm. So we are trying to minimize a certain function f of x over the interval a, b. So the first thing we do is that 
we set a1 to be equal to a and b1 to be equal to b then our x are at 1 is given by this so you can say the same as what we we're doing just that here we always have 0 0.618 b minus a then our xl1 is also given by this relation here then we evaluate f of x r at the first iteration f of x l at the first iteration then if f of x l 1 is less than f of x r 1 then we do this otherwise if f of x r 1 is less than f of x l 1 we also do this okay so after doing this we continue the process until the desired accuracy is attained or until the desired number of iteration is attained so now let's take an example so the question says minimize f of x equals x power 4 minus 6 s cubed plus 12 s squared minus 8 x plus 1 over the interval 0 1 using the golden ratio section search so we are doing two iterations okay all right so you could see that from the question this our interval 0 1 so that means that our a is 0 and our b is 1 and our a1 is the same as a so that's 0 our b1 is the same as b that is 1 so we are doing all this from the algorithm so the algorithm says that x r at the first iteration is given by a1 plus 0 0.618 then times b minus a so making substitution gives us this and we have x r1 to be 0 0.618 let's compute x l at the first iteration the one is given by b1 minus 0 0.618 b minus a so b1 is 1 then we have 0 0.618 b minus a so 1 minus 0 then doing the necessary commutation is going to leave us with 0 0.382 okay so after getting our xr and xl at the first iteration what we do is that we evaluate them so we put them inside the objective function and make evaluations so when you take f of xr1 the same as f of 0 0.618 things f of xr1 is 0 0.618 and doing this computation is going to give us so putting this in the objective function the objective function is x power 4 minus 6 s cubed plus 12 s squared minus 8 x plus 1 so wherever you find x we put 0 0.618 there so doing that will give us this then we come to f of x l 1 so that one too there's a value so putting us in the objective function gives us that so now we have to make a decision all right but you can see that the value for f of x r 1 is less than f of x l 1 okay this here is less than what we have here don't be confused okay for you know for negative numbers they lie at the left side of our own number system and with them the bigger ones are less than the smaller ones that's for the negative numbers okay so since f of x l1 is less than f of x l since f of x r1 is less than f of x l1 it means that the minimum point to be somewhere here so we discard this region then our a2 will be xl1 and our b2 will be b1 right so a2 is equal to xl1 which is 0 0.382 and b2 is equal to b1 which is 1 so from the algorithm you can reverse it that so it says when this condition is met then we have xl2 is equal to xr1 
and xr1 is 0 0.618 then that's how we compute xr squared that one is giving us e2 plus 0 0.618 b2 minus e2 and making substitution b2 is 1 e2 is 0 0.382 we end up with 0 0.763 9, 2, 4. So note that everything that we are doing is from the algorithm. So if you are kind of confused, we are doing everything here based on the algorithm. Okay. So you see, it says if this condition is met, then we do this. So that is what we just did. Okay. All right. So we go on to do the second iteration. Okay, so now we have XL at the second iteration, and that was 0.618. We have XR at the second iteration, that was 0.763924. So putting those into our objective function, you know, computing f of XL squared, we will get negative 0.63122 for f of XL2. And f of x r two will give us negative zero point four four two seven three. Okay. So you can see that this here is smaller than this. All right. So since we are asked to just do two iteration then we can conclude that since f of x l squared is less than f of x, x r squared then 0 0.618 is a minimum point for the for the objective function we had okay and the minimum value is negative 0. So it's negative 0. 0.63122 okay so thank you very much that's going to be all for the golden ratio section search method so in our next video we'll talk about line search techniques by kev fitting that will be in lesson 11 so thank you very much and see you in lesson 11